Cheers then, take care. Bye bye. Check out this cheeky little robin. <laughs> cheeky little robin. It's slow, easy. 3D print our own Corcovado back cases. Can't put it in the description. Are you had your fill? Oh, I'm fully filled now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please me. Back at Brenda's. Got a massive delivery from Victorinox. It's not actually a sponsored thing for YouTube, it's for Instagram. They have sent me some amazing gear. Zoom, zoom, zoom. This, wow, this is a beast. It's bigger than I thought. Wow. Nice pen knife, this is really nice. We've also got an amazing set of knives for all the travels to all the bases. I think you've got one, Josh, haven't you? Indeed. That is smooth. Yeah, nice one. So when we do the hut building tours in the summer, we can, we'll be have, style. we'll be like matching. Fill it with tools. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So we're going to make some Instagrams today. We're going to go get the food from the farm in a minute. The reason I like this campaign is because Victorinox are doing city and nature. And it's anything that has that kind of plus sign in the middle between the sort of the mind and the body on and off. It's a good thing to be a part of and I've got to pay for those hut materials. <laughs> so this is perfect. As we do these hut building tours through the summer, one of Josh's friends called Sam, who's come and helped. Actually, he helped us when we were stuck in the mud as well. He's been here three or four times to cook at Brenda's table. Yeah. And it's been good. Yeah. And he's not only going to come and do the chefing, but he's also going to help teach people how to do kind of open fire cooking and stuff like that. So that's a really amazing addition. So thank you, Sam, so much for getting involved. Oh, as you can tell, I'm grinning. I'm, I love the food. His curries are on point. What? USB charging. <laughs> Charge your phone. Put a power bank on the inside. I see. All I need to do is just find a little solar panel. <laughs> Stick that on the on the front and then we'll be good. I must admit it's a bit weird doing Instagrams compared to vlogs. I know, it's different when you do a brand deal with a video because you're using your voice to sort of blend a brand's message into what we're talking about and doing together. When it's a photo, you're literally just using your image, which is, it's kind of, some people it's probably very normal. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the, um, the whiskey video of White Mackay, the whiskey taster. He just goes, oh, you take a bit and you swirl it around your mouth and then you throw it over your shoulder. <laughs> i tell you what I'd really love. I would love for a friend of mine to move into Brenda's so I could still come and see it and visit it and be here now and again, but... I just don't think I'm the right person to be to be running Brenda's basically. I don't think it's open enough for me and I don't think I'm here enough to make it work. But look, it is absolutely gorgeous. Got a few photos with the luggage, now we're gonna bowl over to the uh, the next door farm. It feels like, it might not be, but it feels like one of the last times we'll be doing that from here at Brenda's. It does feel like the end of an era, Josh has uh, Found a new place nearby. Yep. I haven't officially handed in the notice on Brenda's yet. I think I said before that I looked at a bunch of different woodlands on the estate, which was quite revealing really, because when I first went to look at woodland, I had no idea what was good, what was bad, what would give a nice feel. And most of the sites, even if they're biologically diverse, have a real sense they're not a destination. And that's something that we really got with the V1 location is that it was a destination and it was quiet and relatively accessible. So I'm actually thinking what we might do is take the huts and move them deeper into the woods, what I used to think of as the sanctuary, and then access it through a different gate. So mentally it feels like a new space and hopefully that will inspire new imagination. But also it will mean that we'll be able to then, when people come visit, go look and see where we were for V1 and hopefully see whether it has gone back to nature, see the evidence of whether we can use it for a year and then put it back to where it was or do we screw it necessarily? And I try and I try to not feel like the bar is the only way But I'm taking off, I can't stop myself Come to me butterfly, come to me, come to me I don't yes, know, I thank don't you for coming to me. this way you flirt. can promise me another day I love you, but I'm slipping. Who don't wake me, don't wake me, don't wake me. I haven't got 
I haven't got any food for you, sorry. Oh, the little cows. All the little cows are out as well. Yeah. Hi, Derek. How you doing? Thank you. There's a bull out here now, so don't go near yeah, right. anywhere where there's animals. Oh, okay. How has the uh, weird sort of climate affected the yield of crops? Oh, it's terrible, yeah. Really? Well, we haven't got half the stuff we needed planted. Like the worst year on record, or like? No, I've never known one like it, no. Wow. That's shocking. I'll, yeah, I'll keep you posted with our movements, but like I said. So we're over at the farm now. And uh, what is this that you've been building? This is going to be whatever you want it to be, <laughs> at a reasonable price. <laughs> Basically, you do you do the picket and cook it and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's back up for that if it's bad weather. Okay. And you know we've done the bluebell walk and the weather was a bit yeah. nasty, so um, they all come in here. So just a nice meeting place, really. And yeah. you've been building it yourself, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. What was it beforehand? It was a carving shed. Just built it up on the same footprint. Yeah. Sweet Williams. Sweet Williams, all of them. All of them. Sweet Williams, wow. Do you grow them like in a box or do they just spring up and then you sort of... We've got a few patches out in the Ah, field. okay, nice. Everyone well... says they remind me of my mum. <laughs> <laughs> so we got leeks and rhubarb. Rhubarb and a dozen and, eggs. And a dozen eggs. And a bit of broccoli. Nice one. Take the bottom leaves off. Uh, they'll last longer, change the water every now and then. Okay. They should last two or three weeks. You mean strip the leaves like this? Yeah, but they're going to be in the water because they just go all rotten. Oh. Okay. Steve and Louise are... Genuinely a really lovely couple, you know, looking around his cabin, it's exactly what we're up to, you know, building cool spaces to get people to connect with nature. Louise knows her stuff. My relationship with these guys kind of sums up what this year's felt like. On the level of buying flowers and food from them, it's great. Our relationship works perfectly at this level. As soon as the conversation was going into land and what we might create infrastructurally, it goes beyond the relationship people want to have with us and the project and it just feels easier again you know we can just go back to the light relationship that we had before and maybe that's the right thing all of this learning and oh sorry mate has made me realize that v1 really really worked well and v2 is simply a copying and replicating and transposing of that model in as many different spaces and corners and places around the world as we can because that seems to be the level. Last night, I actually spoke at the Women's Institute in Ashurst when I was at the Christmas Panto. The guy that did the music for the film, his auntie, came up to me and asked if I'd speak. So last night I spoke to 20 mature women about the project and brought them right up to date with where we are today. And they are a force to be reckoned with. If you haven't checked out the Women's Institute, then go have a look. It's very similar to the Corcovado mindset. It's like a, it's all about learning and creativity. It's all about trying to learn about the issues of our times. It's about community. It's a network of, I think, 6,000 groups around the UK of women that get together to empower, inspire each other. I felt very privileged to be invited along. Even in that crowd, when I'm talking about one hut, two huts in a woodland, it doesn't suffer all that much criticism, really. People can see that you're not in there to rule the roost or to shake things up or to take over. It's clear that you're coming in humbly to enjoy what's already there. And I think that's all I've got energy for, frankly. I think this has sucked the oxygen out of my tank, having all this politics, and you've got to know your limits. Don't make me explain I'm worn, I'm torn. If you guys saw the video where I was dreaming here with Bruce about planting a living chapel, it might be easy for you to think that it's a failed idea because I'm not going to be building here in this field. And I can understand that. But I want to encourage you that any time you generate an idea and you spend the time with love creating and manifesting a picture of an idea you've made it you've made it in your mind it's become a picture now the ingredients might change the spot might be different but once that idea is manifest in your mind it's not very far away from becoming a material reality and although it won't be happening on this piece of land there's nothing that can say it won't happen at one of the other bases or in the new spot in the woodland that we go to once it's real in your mind, that's at least half the work. And then you're just waiting for 
the right moment to occur. And I can't escape. I'm so so. Woo! Raw rhubarb will wake you up in the morning, I can tell you that much for free. In my chest it aches. Your soul is my soul, your love makes me whole. I don't wanna go. But I'm breaking down and I know. We are back at the fountain. It feels like a long lost home. Look at that little sneaky shepherd's hut. They're springing up everywhere. Little cheeky composting toilet. Shower. Mm. Let's have a look. Oh, look at the decent shower in there. So just open decking. Water just runs out. Very good. So it's literally a couple of weeks or so until the first of the hut building tour here in Sussex. Two of the tickets have gone. There's two remaining. And we're going to have Sam the chef coming down and doing a little something something, teaching a little something something for us, which is going to be really, really good. And also on the theme of women, I want to tell you about one other project I got to be a part of this week called World Education Day of Connection. Many, many, many moons ago, me and Louis travelled around the world doing something called the Solvi Tour. We got applications from people with ideas to change the world, all from around the world. And there was one woman called Lisa Booth who made an application from Los Angeles and her idea was to connect classrooms all around the world. She did a V1 where she connected one classroom from LA to one classroom in Tanzania. This year was her V2, and it happened this Wednesday, and I've got some clips from it. I am excited to introduce and share uh, with everyone This is World Education Connection. These guys in Tanzania. But it's trial and error. Life is about rolling with the punches. You know what? When you take on something so big, you've got to be able to either produce it, and if it doesn't, we go back and we look at what went wrong, we make changes, and we move forward. We don't stop. If you can learn about the value of connection on a personal and on a global level at your age, you're going to have a massive head start in life. She upgraded the technology. She got more help from Microsoft and Skype. And I think she had 18 classrooms all connected. And to top it off, she got on the news. The second annual World Education Day of Connection. This program brings together via Skype local students with international students in Africa. Along with some guest speakers, kids from Woodman Elementary School in Chino Hills, and Chaparral Middle School in Diamond Bar prepared musical presentations and so much more. It's a uh, coming together, really, of classrooms from uh, the two countries, really to focus on what it means to be connected, what it means to have human connection. This program aims to develop global relationships between countries. And so here's a little message from Lisa about where she's going with V3. Hi Dave. Coming up in our third year, we have, we're focusing a lot on our curriculum, a WEC Journey of Connection journal. Students will have all of the exercises, all the activities, place that they can also process and think about what connection means to them. We found that storytelling is so powerful and if we can get students to exchange more stories personally that that will create connection. If anybody is out there who is in technology that has any desire to work with an amazing organization like WEC, please get in touch with us, worldeducationconnection.org. You can email me at Lisa Booth at worldeducationconnection.org. We appreciate it. Have a great evening, guys. It's been a pretty intense period of transition and I'm really, really hoping that in the next couple of weeks it will be over, it will be done, it will be in our space in Wiston and we'll be on the hut building tour and we'll be properly into the creative part of V2. It's been a bit of a hell of a roller coaster with tons of learning but I am done with the learning. I want to get into the creating for a while now and so hopefully you guys will just um, bear with as we go through that transition and I think we'll get back to some of the former glory. I will see you next Thursday 9 p.m. Take care of yourselves and look after each other. This little clip is my first ever attempt at trying to video on the Fairphone. So let me know what the quality of sound and visuals like compared to the other clips in this video. This is Robbie. You might remember that I was lucky enough to be on his Thinky Thinky Make podcast last year when we were in the woods eating corn around the fire. Lovely. And he, corn. He's lived to tell the tale and he's back again. We're here with Tim as well. He is going to be filming some clips 
He's got a new YouTube channel. Go click subscribe, guys, because he's just getting started and you will like it. Took me a little while, but I've managed to finally port my number over now. So the Fairphone is legitimately the phone I'm on and I'm now legitimately on the people's operator. So if you do want to join the little giving group, then go onto the website, sign up. Took five minutes to administrate and then a day or so to actually switch over. In the drop down of all the charities, you can actually just choose Corcovado instead of a charity and then we'll figure out how to administrate the funds together. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna live this way, nobody can.